Hey, I'm Rob Witcher. In today's video, we'll be walking through a mind map for single sign-on and federated access within Domain 5 to highlight the major concepts and terms and how they interrelate to help guide your studies and help you pass the CISSP exam. This is the second of two videos for Domain 5. Single sign-on and federated identity management are both about allowing users to access multiple systems with a single set of credentials. Users love this as they now need to only remember one terrible password instead of multiple terrible passwords. <laughs> and they only need to authenticate once to magically get access to all their applications. Single sign-on protocols and systems are designed to work within one organization. A major protocol that enables single sign-on is Kerberos. Kerberos enables authentication via tickets over an insecure network. Kerberos is a complicated protocol that is also very flexible, and as such, it has a lot of components. The first component, or rather person, is the user or client. This is the individual that would like to gain access to a service through Kerberos. Kerberos provides two major services, the authentication service and the ticket granting service, both of which are contained within what is known as the key distribution center, the KDC. The authentication service issues ticket granting tickets. The ticket granting ticket is then passed to the other component within the KDC, the ticket granting service. The ticket granting service is what issues service tickets. The service ticket is now finally what the user sends to the service, the application in order to get access. And finally, services are the applications, the systems that the user actually wants to gain access to. The final piece worth mentioning related to Kerberos is that by default, it only supports symmetric key cryptography. This is a pretty significant drawback. By the way, I'm working on a detailed video explaining Kerberos, which I'll link to in the description below when it's done. There is a second protocol that enables single sign-on capabilities, and you should know a tiny bit about it. It's known as Sesame, as in Open Sesame. Sesame supports not just symmetric cryptography, but also asymmetric solving the major symmetric key cryptography problems, scalability, and key distribution. Now let's talk about federated access. From a user perspective, it looks exactly like single sign-on. The user enters one set of credentials, and they magically get access to a bunch of different applications. The key difference is that in a federated access, users can gain access to not just internal applications, but also externally managed applications. Think access to software as a service applications in the cloud. Federated access relies on a trust relationship between three different entities, the user, the identity provider, and the service provider. Let's dig into these three entities. The first is the user, sometimes also referred to as the principal. The identity provider is the entity that authenticates the user, verifies the user identity. Often, this is Active Directory. And finally, the service provider, sometimes also referred to as the relying party, is what the user actually wants access to. This is the cloud-based service or the internal application. There are a number of different protocols that enable federated access. The major one that you need to know about is SAML, the Security Assertion Markup Language. As we talked about with Kerberos, relying on sending tickets, SAML does the same thing, but it doesn't call them tickets, rather it calls them tokens. These tokens contain assertion statements, things like the user ID, timestamp, and lifetime of the token. Assertion statements contained within a token are written in XML, the extensible markup language. SAML was designed to be used in many different use cases. As such, it is made up of a bunch of different components that make it very flexible and very adaptable. We'll go through those four major components here now. Profiles define how SAML can be used for different business use cases, such as for web single sign-on or for LDAP. Bindings map SAML onto different communication protocols, for example, HTTP, allowing SAML to communicate across different types of networks. The protocol component within SAML defines how entities send and respond to requests. And the assertion component defines the authentication and authorization and other such attributes. Now, I mentioned there are a number of different federated access protocols, and there's three other ones that you should be somewhat familiar with. The first is known as WS Federation, 
and it provides both authentication and authorization. OpenID provides authentication, and OAuth provides authorization capabilities. The final piece in this mind map, somewhat related to single sign-on, is identity as a service, essentially a cloud-based service used for cloud-based access management. The only part that I'll talk about here are the different types of identities that we can use for IDAS. The first is a cloud identity, which is an identity created and managed in the cloud. Synced identities are two identities, one created and managed locally, and a second identity in the cloud. The key here is that these two identities are synchronized. A change to one identity is automatically reflected, synchronized to the other. Linked identities are very similar. You have two identities, one in the cloud and one local. The difference is that there is just some indication, some linkage between them, but changes to one are not automatically synchronized to the other linked identity. And finally, federated identities. This is what we've talked about in federated access. A user has one identity that allows them to gain access to both local and cloud-based services via federated identity management. And there you have it, a summary of single sign-on and federated access within Domain 5. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'll provide links to the other mind maps videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.